Hello friends and welcome to Knowledge Lesson 5 where we will learn about the deciduous forest habitat. What is a forest you ask? Simply put, a forest is a large area with trees. Have you ever been or seen a forest? And if so, where? And what things are found in a forest? Are all forests the same or are there different types of forests? Well, let's see if we can find the answers to these questions. First, let's take a look at this map. Everywhere that you see the color yellow on this map represents the location of a temperate deciduous forest. As you can see, they are located in North America, the southern tip of South America, Northern Europe, Eastern Asia, Eastern Australia, and all of New Zealand. Today you will learn about the temperate deciduous forest in the United States, located in parts of Tennessee and right here in North Carolina. This forest is also a national park called the Great Smoky Mountains and is one of the most visited national parks in the United States. The mountains are named for the blue gray mist that surrounds the mountain peaks almost year round. Listen carefully and get ready to learn all about what a temperate deciduous forest is. Hello friends. It's your pal Rattenboro here with the next thrilling chapter in our Habitat Read Alouds. After looking at some very exotic and strange faraway places, I thought we could visit a habitat that is quite common in many parts of the United States. This is a forest habitat. You know you're in a forest habitat when everywhere you look, there are trees all around you. You may be wondering why I'm up in this tree. Well, I'm enjoying the wonderful view of a forest in North America. There are over 500,000 acres of forest in this national park. Many of you may have seen forests like this before, either in a real life or in books. You may be familiar with some of the plants and animals that live here in the Smoky Mountains. A lot of them live in many other places all over the United States. There are many different kinds of forest in the world. The forests of the Smoky Mountains are called temperate forest. A temperate forest grows in an area that has four seasons, including a warm summer and a cold winter, and receives steady rainfall throughout the year. This forest is also called a deciduous forest because it is full of deciduous plants, trees, bushes, and many shrubs that lose their leaves every fall. Then they grow leaves again when the temperatures start to rise in the spring. The temperate deciduous forest has a much friendlier climate than the other habitats we've learned about, and it can support many different kinds of plant and animal life. A temperate deciduous forest is made up of broad leaf trees like oak, maple, beech, and elm. These trees grow very tall and are thickly covered with wide leaves that are better at collecting sunlight than trees like pine trees that have needles instead of leaves. Under these taller trees, there are samplings, young trees, as well as shrubs, bushes, and plants that bear fruit. Closer to the ground, grow shorter plants like grasses and wild flowers. First, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down so I can show you this wonderful habitat. The tree I'm standing in now is an oak tree. This oak tree is very tall and is covered with leaves and acorns. An acorn is a seed and if it gets planted in the forest soil, it can grow roots and shoot which will eventually turn into an oak sapling. Like the saguaro cactus in the desert and the acacia tree in the savanna, oak trees provide shelter and food for many animals. Owls, woodpeckers, mice, and foxes make their homes in the branches or around the roots of the oak tree. And acorns are food for squirrels, birds, deer, and many other animals. Look at that tasty insect. Well, the oak tree is home for hundreds of different kinds of insects, like the stink bug and the weevil, which eat its leaves and acorns. 
Moths and butterflies lay their eggs in the tree. Other insects like ants, timber beetles, and many others live under the bark of the oak or in the dead fallen trees. Just as insects are drawn to the oak as a source of food, so are animals that feed on the insects. Spiders and all kinds of birds hunt for tasty bugs among the branches of the oak tree. Bears, are, bears and other animals find food here as well. The oak tree is an amazing habitat in itself. Down on the forest floor, there are all kinds of shrubs, the fruits of which are food to many different species of animals, including rabbits, chipmunks, deer, and omnivores like bears. Mmm, some of these blueberries are perfectly ripe and they are tasty and delicious. What a tasty treat. Down here on the ground, I can see wildflowers, grasses, and clover. These plants, which cover the forest floor, are home to many types of insects and are food to grazing animals such as deer and mice. One interesting thing about the plants in the forest is that often they grow leaning in the same direction. Isn't that strange? Well, they do have to do that because they are looking for sunlight. The leaves of the big trees get all the sun. Only a small amount of sunlight gets through to the forest floor. That's why it's so shady in here. The plants down here have to grow toward the sun so that they can get enough light to make the food they need to survive. You may have seen this fuzzy green stuff growing on rocks, trees, and on the ground in the forest or countryside. This is called moss. Mosses are small green plants that grow in clumps in damp and shaded places. They cover parts of the forest floor like a carpet and are home to many small animals and insects as well. It feels really soft to walk on, thick and spongy, and it tickles a bit. Now, we're going to take a look at some of the animals that live here. The Great Smoky Mountain National Park is home to almost 400 different kinds of animals. Animals that live in the temperate deciduous forest are adapted to living in a habitat with four seasons. Let's start with the mighty oak. This amazing tree is home to many animals and I'm standing at the nest of one of them, the gray squirrel. This little guy is covered in warm gray brown fur with a white chest and a long bushy tail. Squirrels live in holes in the trunks of trees or in nests high up in the trees like this one. Their nests are built from twigs, leaves, moss, and grass. Squirrels use their strong back legs and sharp claws to help them leap from tree to tree to run up and down the tree trunks. And they use their tails to help them balance. Squirrels are omnivores and spend most of their time looking for food. The squirrel eats mostly acorns from the oak tree but it also eats nuts, mushrooms, berries, seeds, and even bird eggs and insects. This squirrel might be nimble on an acorn or two, but it will also bury and store or save many of the acorns underground. So it will have them in the, win in the winter when the other food is hard to find. This is a barreled owl. He lives in a hole in this oak tree as well. I have to be careful because owls are carnivores, which means they eat guys like me. Unlike the elf owl in the desert, these owls happen to enjoy eating rats. Ugh. This owl also eats other small animals like mice, insects, and other birds. Owls have very good hearing and excellent eyesight, which allows them to find their prey easily in the thick, dense forest. Owls are nocturnal, which means they only come out at night. So I have some time before this one is ready for a late night snack. Wait a minute. 
What's that scratching sound coming from below? It's a black bear. Black bears are common in North American temperate deciduous forest. And there are more than a thousand in this national park. They are large animals. They weigh as much as 14 first graders. That's a lot of first graders. And when they stand on their hind legs, they can be taller than a person. Bears are omnivores and hibernate or sleep during the winter and hollowed out trees or caves. When they are hibernating, bears use less energy and do not need to eat any food for many, many days. This is a good thing because during the winter, the foods that bears eat are scarce and hard to find. Bears are covered in thick black or brown fur and they have sharp claws to strip the bark off trees to uncover the insects that live there. This bear will use its long sticky tongue to get into every crack to hunt out the insects and they'll make a delicious meal for him, I'm sure. Wait, I just saw a deer through those trees. Deer often live in the temperate deciduous forest because it is such a good place to stay hidden, but they often hunt for food in neighboring meadows. This is a buck. A buck is a male deer, and we can tell because male deers have antlers. Did you know that bucks' antlers fall off every year and will grow back again? Bucks mark their territory by stripping the bark off trees with their antlers. Bucks also use their antlers for fighting with other male deer. This deer is a white-tailed deer. Its coat is tan right now, but in the winter, it will change to gray-brown, and it has patches of white on its underside. This helps the deer to stay camouflaged or hidden in its environment. How do you think the changes in color from tan to gray-brown with patches of white in the winter helps to camouflage my friend the deer? Deer graze on grasses and eat tree leaves, berries, and acorns, among other things. They mostly come out to feed at night when the light is very low, and they rest during the day. This white-tailed deer has strong, long legs, which are good for running and jumping, for escaping from predators like wolves, coyotes, and even people. The temperate deciduous forest climate can support many different plants and animals because it has four seasons. It is called temperate because it never gets too cold like the Arctic or never gets too hot like the Sonoran Desert. There is a steady rate of rainfall throughout the year so plants can grow and animals can have food and water to keep them alive. This is just one of the many kinds of forest in the world. Next, we're gonna take a look at another kind and it's going to be very different in a lot of ways. But until then, I'll see you next time.